But my name is Noelia Alvarez and I come from UMD College Park in um, Maryland, close to DC. I'm a PhD candidate in the Urban and Regional Planning and Design program at the School of Architecture and Planning. So today we're going to talk about suburbs and immigrant communities in the suburbs. So I don't know how aware you know, but a lot of ch changes have occurred. Um, most of the time people think that suburbs are just you know, white affluent families that live there, but in the last two or three decades, the suburbs have completely changed. They're actually way more diverse now than um, downtowns or central cities. Um, a lot of people are moving to the suburbs. Um, you know, initially we had ethnic enclaves, and now we have ethno burps, um, as one scholar describes them. Um, and with these changes, uh, a lot of the immigrants that are moving into the suburbs are hailing from Latin America, Asia, and Africa. So what, what's happening in the suburbs when this is changing? Um, these kind of migrations are changing completely now. Um, we're having successful immigrant small businesses in a lot of these um, ethno burbs, or I mean technically there are kind of like ethnic enclaves too, but just in the suburbs. So a lot of these businesses are able to provide um, unique needs to the community. Um, they're usually very small, they usually employ less than 20 people, at most usually 10 or less. Um, so they're there um, in gr grand number of um, businesses and they create cultural identity, leadership, and the social cohesion. Um, and most of them tend to be in industries that are more in the food, retail, and service industry. So think of um, grocery stores that have local needs of the customers from the suburbs, or check cashing stores, um, or just a plethora of other restaurants, you know, whether it's Latin food, um, uh, food from Asian, uh, different Asian countries, um, of that like. So my dissertation focuses on Langley Park. Langley Park is an unincorporated community um, not far from the University of Maryland. The University of Maryland is the red star on the map, and what's on here is the census-designated place border. So it's a little bit weird because Langley Park is also right by the border of another county. So it's in Prince George's County, which is right next to DC, and it's also in Montgomery County. Um, most people get confused, you know, they might be on the Montgomery side, which is outside the black, outline, um, but they're, they're in, actually in Prince George's County. And bear with me as I'm, I'm a novice for OSM, so this is just me telling you what I propose to do with OSM for my dissertation, how I'm going to describe this community. So the highlighted in pink is a commercial corridor, and as I said, you know, not all of it is in Prince George's County, there's also parts in Montgomery County. Um, and there's there are two very different jurisdictional counties. Um, you know, one side may have tenant um, policies, you know, protections, while one other side does not. Um, but obviously, for commercial purposes, there are no tenant protections um, in in these spaces. So my focus uh, is on the commercial corridor of these two landscapes in the suburbs. And you can see it's not too far away from DC. It's only like a 15 minute drive. Obviously for people in DC, this is like an hour away, but this is really close actually to the border. Um, so my idea is looking at, okay, so what about these small businesses? Like, why am I looking at small businesses in this inner ring suburb? Well, many times we're trying to ask the question, you know, how do we help small businesses? Well. It's a little bit different when you're trying to help immigrant businesses because they serve multiple purposes. Um, you know, a store, a grocery store is not just a grocery store. A grocery store in Langley Park is a check cashing store inside. It's a jewelry store inside. It's um, another a little stand selling like fruits with, uh, I don't know, tajin, the little spicy pepper. Um, so it's multiple, it serves multiple purposes. Um, so my idea is thinking of, okay, so these businesses are very different. How do their narratives of their vulnerabilities and challenges differ from what top-down local officials think their vulnerabilities are? And what, how do they perceive um, that community, Langley Park? And Langley Park is right now going through many changes. Um, first of all, pandemic. You know, but even though the pandemic has been there, I mean, a lot of businesses have lost clientele. The bus, the businesses there are still booming. Um, it's very rare to see vacant spaces in Langley Park. Um, 
Also, there's a light rail being um, built. Uh, a purple. It's called the Purple Line. So it's going to connect Montgomery County with Prince George's County, and they, you can also connect it to DC um, Metro as well. So that's being built at the moment, and a lot of people are nervous about what's what sort of changes this is going to bring. Um, gentrification, displacement. Um, many people that live in Lindley Park, two thirds are renters. There are no rent protections in place. Um, many of them are immigrant families. Most people who live in Langley Park are from Guatemala and El Salvador, um, like 80%, basically. And so what is this, what's this going to happen? Like, what's going to happen? What kind of changes are going to happen? You have small businesses that are catering to the needs of people that live there, but also people that are traveling outside to, to go to Langley Park. I mean, I myself don't live that far from Langley Park, and I, I'll go there if I want Guatemala food. Like, my family is from Guatemala, and I know I'm going to find the best Guatemalan food there. Um, but I also know I can find other things. You know, I can find pupusas, you know, Salvadoran food. Or if I want really good Indian food, I know that I can go there. Um, so what's going to happen with gentrification? So this is what I'm trying to analyze. Um, how are these narratives different? And my other second question is thinking about um, lately economic development strategies imposed by planners and city officials. Um, they really kind of lean towards marketing and branding as a way to increase that economic development of a commercial corridor, corridor section. Um, but is that always right to kind of market and capitalize on their identity? Is that really going to help businesses stay in place and not be displaced? So in the 1950s, this are, these are photos of Langley Park. Uh, you know, Langley Park is very common of the suburbs. It was built. Um, in the 50s, a lot of the apartments and single-family units that are there, which is only one-third, were catered to, to returning soldiers from World War II. So you have your plazas that were being built. And in the 80s, a lot of changes happened. You had the Immigration Act um, in the 60s, and you had um, civil war that was happening in El Salvador. Um, and a lot of immigrants started coming into the DC metropolitan area, but a lot of them were settling in the suburbs, and that's something that's been happening even today. Um, a lot of uh, Latinx folks that were living in DC were also starting to get displaced in the 70s because of gentrification. So another community that they were seeking to move to was Langley Park. So Langley Park was also a transition community, but it was also a community where first migrants were moving into. So in the 80s, um, you know, in the 70s, Langley Park was predominantly white, um, a Jewish working class community. By the 80s, uh, there was a growing population coming from El Salvador and different Southeast Asian countries. So you see photos here on the left, a food truck called La Chiquita, then um, this huge mall there called Asian Town, and then a, a old Langley Park Plaza when steak was only $2.99. Okay, so this is a present. So in the middle you have Asian Town, and then on the left you have La Union, and La Union was named after a department in El Salvador, and this is the inside of La Union on the right. There's a lot of different stores, um, a lot of Guatemalan restaurants and bakeries as well, but you know, just like a barber shop and um, a piñata store, you know, a store for quinces and stuff like that. So I explained the changes that are happening right now. So there's been a lot of, um, for maybe for the last three decades, there's been a lot of ways from ways of thinking of how to, you know, how do we change Langley Park? You know, how do we capitalize on that identity? So um, if you look on Google Maps, sometimes it pops up as International Quarter, and the International Quarter name was designed by an actually a professor of the urban planning program at my school. Um, but most people that live there don't even know it's called International Quarter. Um, then there's also a business association that's only in the Montgomery side called, called Tacoma Langley Crossroads. Um, and only people there may call it that, or people that help businesses call it that. And then you had a local politician come in recently and calling that area the Northern Gateway. Nobody knows that name. I've, I've asked people, they're like, oh, we didn't know that we were called that. Um, and then most recently, a person from uh, LA was able to change, uh, I think, one neighborhood in LA as like the Salvadoran Quarter. So now it's like his mission to seek other neighborhoods in the country to call them Salvadoran Quarter. Um, and I was in a meeting with him, this was during the pandemic, and other people that are involved in Langley Park. And, you know, he was really marketing, like, yeah, we're going to call the Salvadoran Quarter. And I'm like, well, it's not the Salvadorans that live there. You know, if anything, there are more Guatemalans now. So it's always a, that contentious question, like, when do you give a place an identity? 
and how long does it stay with that identity? So my whole idea is to map the businesses, um, to take photos of plazas, sidewalks, storefronts, and in-store interactions. So not just by talking and interviewing businesses, but also to map it and visualize it. So using OSM sort of as a digital humanities approach to actually visualize the sites of the businesses. So from the photos, you know, I'll properly map the stores in OSM and tag and important identity markers, you know, what sort of languages are in the storefronts, you know, the signs that you see. Is it only in English? Are there Spanish? Is there, you know, Chinese or Vietnamese or something? Um, and what sort of services do they provide? And then my whole idea is to extract the data and then, you know, either put it on QGIS or Cardo to kind of do this interactive um, map of Langley Park. So, so far I've only been able to do 70% of the field work and some mapping. Um, I did have some setbacks because of COVID-19, Langley Park was one of the hardest communities hit in the DC metro area. Um, but I've been able to go back, plus it's been really cold and now it's getting really nice. So now I can do my field work soon. So this is just one store right now and you see it's Casa Blanca Bakery. Um, this is one of the photos that I put and then on the sign there you see that they're looking for people to work there and that sign is in Spanish. So this is actually a taco store, but it was also selling these very random items. Um, so this is something that I want to reflect on OSM, you know, when I tag buildings, you know, how do we tag these buildings? And then what about these spaces, right? You know, if this person is here every Saturday, like, do I tag a person? They're selling, um, you know, the items that he's selling. So this is inside a grocery store, like I explained, sometimes you have check cashing stores or you have mobile services like this. You know, a lot of people buy, um, you know, cards or minutes to call back home in their country. So this is inside a Indian, um, no, it was a, like a sari store. Um, but we were, I went with Daniela, my friend. <laughs> she helped me do field work. But what was surprising is that we were in the store checking out the dresses, a sari. And in the back of the store, there was another store with like actual doors. And we were like, wait, what? And it was a jewelry store. So it was like a store within a store. So it's like, okay, how do we map this? Because if you look at the map, it's just gonna be like two separate, but they're actually like inside each other. So this is a bakery, a Brazilian bakery store. And when we went inside, I took a photo of the menu because they're not just selling Brazilian goods, they're, you know, selling things of the community too. They're selling pupusas, they're selling tamales. Um, so it's not just the Brazilian, but obviously, you know, they have Brazilian treats as, t as well. And then we also saw this restaurant, African and Salvadoran cuisine, right? Something you probably would have never seen before, but you see it here in Langley Park. So this is another sign we saw. It was a, a vacant, one, a rare vacant sighting of, of, of a place in Langley Park. Um, and it was just somebody, you know, saying that they moved and um, they're trying to like sell this place um, to, oops, sorry, okay, another example. So this is when I started doing OSM, you know, tagging, this is what it looks like. Basically, it's not mapped at all. There's, no one has done work in Lindley Park. Look at this, very empty, you only see one store over stock furniture. And this is what the view looks when editing. So this is what I been doing so far, you know, I've added Senor Chicken, Minute Copy, but in the descriptions and tagging, I'm adding more additional things. I'm adding, you know, language, you know, it's not, not just English, it's also Spanish. I'm adding, serv I'm trying to, actually, that's a question I have for you all. How do you add multiple services to a place? Because if you look at it, it just looks like it's a restaurant, but it's not just a restaurant. It's also, it could be a check cashing store, right? Um, so that's just, where I am right now. So, you know, that's my initial question in the beginning, what I shared with you all. And it's basically, I'm just trying to understand, you know, how do we serve these small businesses in the face of commercial gentrification and displacement and using OSM to kind of figure out, you know, the digital and the visual uh, part of my dissertation. And that will be triangulated with interviews that I will be Conducting with top down and bottom up and bottom up for me is you know the small businesses that serve the community. So that's it. Thank you